How did it affect you emotionally? To make this film? Um, it was very emotional because, um, you know, I, I got very close to Thomas Young, um, the, the main subject of the film, and uh, in a kind of familial sort of way. So when he had his ups and downs, I, you know, after I got to know him real well, it became a little bit like the maternal experience, you know, when, you're, when your kid is suffering. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's no objectivity in terms of my relationship with the uh, subjects. <laughs> I, you know, I, I love the whole family. Try also to, you know, portray them, you know, all the different sides of their, their characters, because I think that, you know, if, if you love somebody as a filmmaker, and, you know, and, and they're your subject, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to paint this totally rosy picture of them. It means you're going to paint an honest picture of them, and then, even though there's negative sides of their personality revealed, that the audience can also fall in love with them because they're human and real. I have another question. <laughs> uh, it w I think it was absolutely brilliant uh, going to Senator Robert Byrd as a central character. How, at what point in the process of making this documentary did you get the idea that that was going to be the central focus from the Congress, from the Senate? That's a, that's a really good question from a, a storytelling and an editing perspective because we, we had a dilemma. Um, Phil Donahue, uh, the editor of Bernadine Kolisch, and I had this huge dilemma in the edit room about connecting the two parts of our story. Um, you know, we have the story of Thomas Young and his family, and we have this story of how we got into the war and the scripted nature of the debate and the politicians. Um, and, you know, where there was a real connection in real life was with Senator Burr, because he was, he was the sort of Thomas, what Thomas Young was to the military, you know, Byrd was in the Senate. You know, he was just out there speaking his conscience. Um, a lot of people were too, but, but he seemed to be the most loud, the loudest and the most articulate. And, and Thomas was, loved Robert Byrd because Thomas, like Phil Donahue, um, is a C-SPAN junkie. And two of them, you know, watched C-SPAN all the time. They're glued to it. So for Thomas, um, the idea of meeting Robert Byrd was this wonderful thing. but. To me, at it, 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 first it seemed like, oh, well, yes, if we could bring Robert Byrd and Thomas Young together for this film, that would be really great. And next thing you know, you know, Phil is on the telephone calling Robert Byrd's office to make it happen. This is what was so wonderful about working with him, is that um, he's, a, uh, he's, he's such a catalyst for making things happen. So Phil got in touch with um, Robert Byrd's office and they invited him uh, and Thomas to come meet the senator. And what you saw on the screen was um, a spontaneous interaction. Um, Phil Dunn, who had sent Robert Byrd what we call the courses, um, which is those, those debating scenes. Um, so Byrd had seen those, but everything that happened when Thomas Young and Byrd came together was spontaneous. But it was, it was, Phil's, you know, it was Phil's great idea to bring them together and then to also make that happen. And that, making it happen is the part that sounds so simple, but not like Baryshnikov dancing, you know? That was so emotional, having Bird read the 23 names. That was incredible. He, that was Bird. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. There it was, right, hanging on his wall. And, <laughs> and the beautiful, yeah, the moment, in the, 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 the sort of fragility, the vulnerability of the old guy who can't read and the young guy who can't walk, and um, but they're both such strong people, and uh, it, it it really is a hopeful ending. <laughs>